Thank you for staying with Morning Live. Now, Northern Cape Premier Dr. Zamani Sol has made a commitment to prioritize services to the people. During his inaugural speech, he announced a reduction in the size of the provincial executive. He also brought, uh, bought ambulances instead of new cars for his MECs. And Dr. Sol plans to fast track service delivery and says that the province will have its own construction company to build roads and RDP houses. Dr. Zamani Saul joins us now uh, from our Kimberley studios. Uh, Dr. Saul, thanks so much for making the time to speak to us here on Morning Live. Now, good morning, Sakina, and good morning to the viewers of Morning Live. So, Dr. Saul, um, much talk about the plans that you've announced for uh, the term of your premiership, but can you first start by just telling us what is your vision for the Northern Cape? <clears throat> Now, my, my vision for the Northern Cape is actually simply spelled as the fact that we are striving to achieve a modern, growing and a successful province. So, uh, what do you want to change about that and how do you intend going about it? Now, as a starting point around uh, building a modern, growing and a successful province, it's us tackling two fault lines uh, in the economy of the Northern Cape. We are sitting with high levels of unemployment, which is currently standing at 27%. And about 45% of the households in the Northern Cape are poor households. They don't know where their next meal will come from. So our frontal attack is basically on these two fault lines. And uh, just looking at uh, some of the uh, bold steps that you have actually declared that people have responded to with much enthusiasm on uh, social media. Uh, you have, uh, for example, at the very onset stated that there will be no pictures of yourself or any of the MECs on uh, the walls of government buildings. <coughs> what are you hoping to achieve by sending that particular message? Let me just give you an example of what we've inherited as the sixth administration. Uh, the fifth administration, when they closed their bank account, the exchequer account, they closed it on a negative balance of 220 million. Currently, we are sitting with a budget deficit of 2.7 billion in a budget of about 18 billion. So, there can be money and time for self indulgence on photos of ourselves all over the place and purchasing of new cars. What we'll have to do, we are sitting with the, major can, with the major challenges to ensure that there is efficiencies in the system and we have to cut wastages and we'll have to drastically cut the frills in order to ensure that the little that is available is focused and redirected at improving the quality of lives of the people of the Northern Cape. So I'm assuming that you would have done, um, for example, a SWOT analysis of what you are faced with in the province and what did that reveal to you? Yeah. No, what, what it actually reveals, and we are still going to embark on a number of other strategic uh, planning sessions in the province, what this actually reveals is that there's a reduced capacity of the provincial government to actually effectively respond to the needs of the people of the Northern Cape. Because if your, if your, if your, if your fiscal capacity is reduced, that impacts on a whole lot of other things. It impacts on your technical capacity, it impacts on your planning capacity, and it also impar impacts on your implementation capacity of major infrastructure projects which are likely to bring about changes in the lives of the people of the Northern Cape. But of course, in, in trying to address this, no doubt you'll be stepping on some toes uh, because you are now messing with the status quo. <coughs> and uh, in this regard, you yeah. know, uh, talking about uh, having an in-house service with regard to the building of RDP houses, for example, that is seen as tampering with the tender process. And there may be some backlash with regard to that. But uh, tell us, you know, what, what, what sort of reaction you've had to this announcement? Check, I got mixed reactions on a whole lot of issues, on the issue of mounting of photographs of the Premier and the MECs. The reality of the matter is that we are not here to be glorified. We are here as servants. 
and any institutional practices and cultures that seeks to put us on a pedestal, we are going to be non-conformist to it, we are going to reject it. And on the issue of, uh, <coughs> of detenderizing the provincial government, there will obviously be mixed responses to that, but the ordinary people who are waiting for RTP houses, the ordinary people who are waiting for major infrastructure projects to be implemented in their areas, they are quite excited about that. It can't be that with a provincial government that can't even build one single RTP house whilst we've got such a massive budget on infrastructure. Our budget on infrastructure as the provincial government stands at 3 billion rand now. If you add on top of that the budget of municipalities, which is the MIG allocation, it's close to 4 billion rand. So it can't be that we don't have our own capacity as government, inside government capacity to implement some of these infrastructure projects. And each and every time when we have to build 100 RTP houses, we have to go through, an S, uh, uh, through a procurement process, which prolongs this whole thing, and sometimes which opens us up to some corrupt activities. Dr. Sol, you say it can't be, but unfortunately that is exactly the case. That is the reality. So how is it going to work uh, as per the vision that you have going forward? No. Already we are working at the establishment of, 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 of a state construction company in the Northern Cape whose responsibility will be to implement some of the infrastructure programs and some of the infrastructure projects that we have in the Northern Cape. There is absolutely nothing wrong in law that, that prohibits us from establishing a construction company uh, in the Northern Cape whose responsibility will be, will be to implement some of the infrastructure programs that we are going to unfold in the next five years. Well, I would imagine it's not going to stop just at the building of RDP houses. So what are you thinking more broadly in this regard? Are there other services that you also wish to bring back in-house, as in within the government departments? Yes, there's a, there's a, there's a whole lot of other services that we must bring back in-house because our efforts is basically to detenderize the provincial government. And one of those services is the maintenance services. And the other one is the issue of security guards. We've got teams already which are working on these proposals to look at how best are we going to ensure that we insource these services. And, and it's not only about insourcing the services, it's not only about the establishment of a state construction company, it's about us addressing one of the major challenges that is confronting us in the province to ensure that we create job opportunities for young people of the Northern Cape. Now, uh, Dr. Saul, there are, of course, other problems uh, bedeviling the province, as does the whole country. Uh, things like unemployment, for example. And how do you plan on addressing some of these very dire issues? No, we, we, we are one of the provinces with your highest levels of unemployment. As I have mentioned, unemployment in the province is currently standing at 27 percent. And from those who are unemployed, about 65 percent thereof is young people. With the research which was conducted, it, was quite, it is quite clear that the biggest contributor to the high levels of unemployment in the province is lack of training and education. Lack of training and education is contributing 73 percent to unemployment in the province. So that is the biggest contributor. That is where we should actually focus our efforts to ensure that young people in the Northern Cape are exposed to different forms of training that would enable them to get into the marketplace and get decent jobs. But our primary focus is to ensure that young people are getting trained and they get retrained, they get the necessary skills that would make, the, that would make it possible for them to be absorbed by the markets. But linked to that also is one very critical aspect of the economy of the Northern Cape. Mining and agriculture are contributing, are the biggest contributors to our gross domestic product per region. And one of the major challenges that we are sitting with in both sectors basically is beneficiation. It's adding of values or ad adding of value to the, national, to the natural products that we are creating. So we took a firm stand that we are going to go out there and in a very vigorous way 
ensure that there is beneficiation of the mineral products which are extracted in the province and as well as the agricultural products from the Northern Cape. Dr. Sola, as usual, the devil is in the detail. Again, how are you hoping <coughs> to bring this about? Because if it hasn't happened until now, what makes you think that you will be able to change that? No, we will definitely be able to change that because it is our responsibility to change the landscape. That is the reason why one of the radical decisions that we are working on is the establishment of the mining company for the Northern Cape. I'm certain you are quite aware that the mining is an exclusive competence of the national government and provinces have got very little role to play. And since 1994, one of the issues and one of the complaints that have been coming from the Northern Cape is that there's a center-periphery configuration of how mining is taking place in the province. Mining houses are coming here, extract raw materials, take them out of the province in a raw form. And there is very little or no beneficiation secondary economic activities which are taking place. We've been complaining about that for the past 25 years. The complaining period should come to an end now. We should take drastic and concrete actions to ensure that we create leverage for ourselves in the mining industry in the province. So in terms of our own investigations, if we establish a, our own mining company that will first and foremost do prospecting of what is our mineral endowment in the province and number two even make application for mining licenses that in itself will give us a strategic gap from which we can be able to play a much more active role in the mining activities which are taking place in the northern cape uh, what you're saying so, is so, so the morning the morning period is effectively over we'll have to do something drastic to change this landscape and this center periphery configuration where northern cape is the periphery used for extraction of raw material and jobs are shipped out of the province and we've got absolutely nothing to do about it. Uh, it all sounds great, Dr. Saul, but very intricate because jobs are not just shipped out of the province, they're shipped out of the country in certain yeah. instances because of the problems that we have, for example, with ESCOM. You have smelters closing down in this country because ESCOM cannot uh, guarantee, or at least there was a point at which they could not guarantee that the lights would be kept on. But I guess more pressingly yeah. at the moment, the fact that it is so expensive to keep the lights on uh, for those who would be doing that sort of work in the country. So how do you plan on addressing those sort of issues and perhaps also couple with your answer the fact that uh, you have problems of people complaining about service delivery in the Northern Cape as well. How are you going to address those things? Now we'll have to address the problems of service delivery which have been raised by our people. During our elections campaign we almost got into each and every household in the Northern Cape. So we know what are, the, what are the main complaints of our people around issues of service delivery. And we are definitely going to respond to those complaints. And some of the initiatives, drastic initiatives that we have introduced, it's our efforts to ensure that we've got adequate resources in the provincial coffers and also in municipalities to address some of those problems. But Sakina, one of the issues I want to raise with you, to reconfigure the economic landscape of this country, you will need political will and courage to do that. If we don't have political will and courage to do that, we are going to sit with a problem where each and every administration we just manage what is there and we don't make impactful changes in the lives of our people. So we just need political will and courage Somebody must be prepared to take the risk in order to ensure that we reconfigure the current economic landscape, which actually does not benefit the poorest of the poor. So what is your sense in this regard? Are you getting a feeling that that political will and courage is there to support some of the very bold decisions that you've made, uh, especially given that, you know, some of these decisions will affect, for example, uh, small businesses who have been doing business with the Northern Cape government. Some of them might lose out when you bring some of these services in-house. So do you have a sense that there will be minimal pushback and that you would be allowed to bring this plan to fruition. 
even if you we establish the company for for, for a construction company for the Northern Cape, there is no way that it would have capacity to implement 100% the project of the provincial government. I'm certain if we manage to establish it this year, within the next five years, it might have capacity to implement about 30% of our CAPEX budget. And there will always be opportunities for small businesses. And above that, we should not only look at the issue of giving support and strengthening of SMMEs with regard to infrastructure projects. The provincial government must introduce incubator programs where we actually give the necessary support to small businesses. Because small businesses in the Northern Cape create quite a number of jobs and our responsibility is to ensure that we give them the necessary support to continue creating those job opportunities which really assist us in order to ensure that young people of the Northern Cape are, 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 are employed. And uh, I suppose that's going to be another task that you'll have to undertake, looking at the incubator programs that already exist and what sort of returns you are getting on those particular investments. But I, I just want to talk uh, briefly about uh, some of the other bold initiatives that you've introduced, selling of the official residence of the Premier and also the fact that no new cars will be bought uh, for MECs. Now, I'm sure some of the MECs must have pushed back somewhat on this, Dr. Saul. Uh, can you just tell us what the latest is in that regard? No, I've got 100% support from the MECs in the Northern Cape around that. The reality of the matter is that we've inherited a precarious fiscal position. And we have to take drastic measures in order to ensure that we turn things around. We've got some of the necessary resources that we are going to need in order to improve the quality of lives of our people. So that's a pragmatic response to real challenges which we are, confr which we are confronted with as the province. I've got 100% from the MECs in the Northern Cape around that. That's fantastic. So have you sold uh, the official residences yet? No, Public Works is busy doing that. It's not only the official residence, <coughs> but we said all the non-core assets of the provincial government. They must be sold in order to ensure that we strengthen the capacity of the Premier's bursary fund to take young people of the Northern Cape to tertiary institutions and expose them to some form of training. Because it does not help us to sit with non-core strategic assets as the provincial government. Whilst when you go to Rodapan, you go to Khaleshiwe, you go to Greenpoint, there's matriculants who are just lingering around there. They've got absolutely nothing to do. We have to sell those non-core strategic, non-core assets of the provincial government in order to ensure that we use the money to create much more opportunities to train young people of the Northern Cape. And what would some of those be, uh, quite apart from the official residents? No, there are some. Uh, there's a whole lot of assets which the provincial government, it's like uh, official residence, there's a whole lot of buildings, almost in each and every town in the province, which, which in actual fact the provincial government is spending money uh, in maintaining those properties and also paying rates and taxes. Just yesterday I got a report from provincial treasurer that we owe municipalities in the province close to a billion on rates and taxes of some of properties of provincial government which are just standing there as white elephant which are not used. And uh, just a final one, perhaps a final spanner in the works. Uh, the Kimberley area, for example, has seen a spate of land grabs recently uh, where people have gone and built uh, shacks on sports grounds. Uh, private land meant for student accommodation also affected. How are these issues yeah. going to be addressed? The starting point in addressing the problem is to ensure that we don't criminalize the effort of our people to shelter themselves. We should not criminalize that effort. The intervention by the municipality should be to ensure that we are making land available for people to be able to shelter themselves. If there is no proper planning in the municipality, demarcate certain land for people to be able to to temporarily put up informal settlements. 
Then you are going to see to the problem where people go around taking each and every piece of empty land which they see. So the starting point is to ensure that there is proper planning, land is allocated for people to ensure that they put up temporary structures whilst we are busy with development of formal sites. Well, Dr. Zamani Sol, thanks so much for engaging us this morning, talking to us about his plans uh, for the Northern Cape province. And uh, I'd love to hear your views on what uh, Dr. Zamani Sol has done already and intends to do in the Northern Cape. At Morning Live, SABC is where you can get in touch.